Hey guys, welcome to episode 2, Basic Attacks and Health Bar. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to perform basic offense. Let's begin with standing normal attacks. There are a total of 6 basic attack buttons in Street Fighter V. People also refer to these as normals. Three punch buttons and three kick buttons with three different strengths called light, medium, and hard. Individually, these six attack buttons are called Light Punch and Light Kick, Medium Punch and Medium Kick, and finally, Hard Punch and Hard Kick. Now for all my future tutorials, I will use the default button layout for the PS4 controller and for the fight stick. So let me quickly go over the default buttons on the PS4 controller just to clarify. So on the PS4 controller, Light Punch is Square, Medium Punch is Triangle, Hard Punch is R1, Light kick is X, medium kick is circle, and hard kick is R2. If you guys are playing on PC or using a different type of controller and don't know the default controls, you can simply check the controller settings in the main menu or through the pause screen. So let's go through these six different attacks. Let's begin with light punch and light kick. In general, light attacks are your fastest normals and are usually the safest on block, but they also generally have short range and low damage. Light attacks are great for stopping close pressure from your opponent. Light attacks are also really good at maintaining offense. Now let's talk about medium punch and medium kick. Medium attacks, as you would expect, are somewhere in the middle. They have decent speed, decent range, decent damage, and most are even safe on block. Because of all these qualities, medium normals are generally the most used attacks during a match. Medium attacks are great for poking, because of the decent range and safety if your opponent blocks it. In case you guys don't know what poking is, poking is when you hit somebody with usually long range safe attacks looking for a stray hit. It could put a lot of pressure on your opponent and make him feel uncomfortable and maybe even convert into a lot of damage. Medium attacks are also good at starting safe combos. They hit stun the opponent longer than light attacks which can lead into more damaging follow ups. Finally we have hard punch and hard kick. Hard attacks are usually your most damaging and longest range normal attacks. The downside is that they are generally your slowest and most unsafe on block. Due to the risk, hard attacks are usually the most rewarding attacks to land on your opponent. Some hard attacks have the ability to cause a crush counter, which I'll go over in more detail in the future. Hard attacks are excellent at punishing your opponent when they make a huge mistake that leaves them open for a long period of time. Key thing to remember guys is that all normal attacks in Street Fighter V are character specific. Some characters just don't follow the general rules I just explained. Some characters have a faster short range attack kit, while others have a slower but longer range attack kit. Let's take a look at Kami for example, her light punch, then her medium punch, then her hard punch. These normals are above average in speed than most characters, but the range is also shorter. Now this time let's check out Dalsum. His light punch looks ordinary like other characters, but all of a sudden when pressing medium punch it's a super long range normal. And then hard punch is even longer range, but you'll notice that these normals are also very slow compared to other characters as well. The difference between punch and kick buttons depends on your character, so be sure to take the time to experiment and understand your favorite character's differences in his normal attack speeds, ranges, and damage. Alright, moving on to crouching normal attacks. To do a crouching attack, simply press any button while crouching. This means you have another 6 crouching normal attacks. Crouching attacks generally follow the same rules as standing attacks with some very small differences. Crouching kick attacks are usually slower than punches of the same strength, but generally hit the opponent low, 
which means they have to be blocked while crouching. While crouching punch attacks are usually faster than kicks of the same strength, but are generally shorter range and rarely hit the opponent low. Take a look at Kami's crouching medium punch and her crouching medium kick. They both look like they hit low to the ground and thus might hit the opponent low, but only her crouching medium kick hits low, and her crouching medium punch does not. The opponent can block it standing. Crouching hard kick is your knockdown attack. It will make your opponent fall down and also hits the opponent low. Crouching attacks usually put your character into a low to the ground state, making it harder for you to be counterattacked. Some of these are extremely low, and we call these types of attacks low profile attacks. You can use low profile attacks to make your opponent misjudge your height and allow you to capitalize. Some characters have crouching attacks that move their entire body forward. These are called slides, and some of these slides even knock down your opponent on hit. Bison has a slide with his crouching hard kick, which almost travels across the entire screen. Keep in mind that a lot of these sliding attacks are very unsafe if your opponent blocks them at close range. Ideally, you want to aim to hit these slide attacks at their absolute max range to make them as safe as possible. Some crouching attacks are both sliding and low profile, allowing them to even go beneath projectiles. Chun Li's crouching medium punch is an example of this. Once again guys, remember that all crouching attacks are character specific. Yeah. Moving on to jumping normal attacks now. To perform a jumping attack, simply press any attack button while jumping in any direction. This adds another 6 jumping normal attacks and sometimes even more depending on your character. All jumping normal attacks must be blocked standing. Jumping attacks once again generally follow the same rules as standing and crouching attacks in terms of speed and ranges with some small differences. Jumping attacks are excellent for starting combos. Jumping attacks are also usually safe after the opponent blocks them. Now the height of your jumping attacks do matter when dealing with hit stun, which is how long your opponent is unable to act after being hit. The deeper your jumping attack is, the more time you have to combo when you land. Some jumping attacks can even hit your opponent on the opposite side. Reuse jumping medium kick for example does this. These are called cross up attacks, and they are especially hard for your opponent to block. Some characters have jumping attacks that are exclusive to jumping straight up. These are called neutral jump attacks. So for example with Chun-Li when I jump back and press hard kick, you can see the animation. And then when I jump forward, the exact same animation. But if I jump straight up, you can see it's an entirely different attack. I'm sure many of you guys have noticed by now that there are a lot of rewards to jumping attacks. But as usual, do not forget that there is an equal risk. You cannot block in the air. Just like standing and crouching attacks, the difference between jumping, punch, and kick buttons depends on your character. Some are great for dealing with your opponent who is also in the air, and some are more suited when your opponent is on the ground. It all depends on the attack's angle, speed, and range.
Alright guys, let's talk about the health bar now. The health bar is located on the top of your screen right beside your character's portrait. Taking any form of damage will deplete your health bar. Once your health bar is fully depleted, you will lose the round. You can briefly see in your health bar the total recent damage you took from whatever attack or combo in red. In Street Fighter V, some characters have different amounts of total health. Usually characters with high versatility, mobility, and range have lower health than the rest of the cast. Characters that are slower in movement and have limited options against range attacks usually have higher health than the rest of the cast. Even though the health bar size may seem the same for every character at the top of the screen, lower health characters will visually take more damage from attacks and vice versa, because the health bar is displaying the percentage of the health left. For example, Zangief has more health than usual, so when I do this Ryu combo on him, check the damage, Now I'm going to do the same exact combo on Kami, who has below average health, and you'll notice that the health bar is depleted more than Zangief. Having different amounts of health is a form of character balance. Some characters can take more risks, while others can't make too many mistakes. The average amount of health in Street Fighter V is 1000 points of health. Ryu and Ken, for example, have 1,000 points, while some characters like Kami only have 900. Birdie has 1,050. Some additional notes, guys, to this episode. All attacks cause a different amount of hit stun. Hit stun is the amount of time you are unable to act after being hit from an attack. Some characters have basic attacks that hit multiple times. Most normal attacks in Street Fighter V will push your opponent away from you on hit. While the opponent is in the corner, you will be pushed out instead. This is important to know when doing combos at different ranges. Jumping and cross-up attacks barely push your opponent away. Once again, just another payoff you receive for the risk you took when jumping in the first place. Keep in mind, unlike Street Fighter 4, there are no close proximity attacks in Street Fighter 5. All normal attacks are the same when done close or far away. Now because of this, it's very important for you guys to understand that every normal attack has its own specific use. This is a direct design choice in Street Fighter V. For example, Ryu's standing light punch may seem absolutely useless at first because it has no range. But it's actually Ryu's absolute fastest attack, even faster than his crouching light punch and light kick. Another example is Ryu's jumping medium punch. It may seem useless as a jumping attack because of its poor horizontal range, but it actually puts your opponent into a juggled state that allows you to combo further after landing it. So this is better suited as an air-to-air -air attack. Now looking at Ryu's crouching hard punch, it may seem like a useless crouching attack because once again it has bad horizontal range and it doesn't even knock down or hit your opponent low. But it's actually used as an anti-air attack which stops people from jumping in on you. So guys, make sure to keep an open mind when exploring your character's normals and realize that every attack was built with a specific design. This was an intention. 
Knowing the correct attack to use in each situation is the first step to mastering your character. For example, you wouldn't want to use Ryu's crouching hard kick at point blank range, since the move is quite slow and can be punished if blocked. Crouching light punch would be better suited in this situation, because it's faster and safe when blocked. Another example is that although Ryu's crouching medium kick hits low and has decent range, it might be better sometimes to use standing medium kick instead, because it has even more range and dodges other low hitting attacks since Ryu raises one of his legs. Longer reaching attacks for the most part are slower, and more unsafe by design, so using them at their absolute max range is usually optimal. This makes it more difficult for your opponent to counterattack you if they are blocked. I should also note that there are two additional buttons in the game that are defaulted to all three punch buttons and all three kick buttons. These are called macro buttons, and on the fight stick they are located on the far right side by default. This is the three punch button, and this is the three kick button. These are put in the game for convenience, but they aren't exactly exclusive attacks. You can also assign additional macro button combinations in the controller settings menu. Macro buttons assigned within the game are considered legal within most well-known Street Fighter tournaments. So for example, let's say I want to activate V-Trigger with a single button. I simply go to the controller settings, and then I can assign a macro under V-Trigger. In this case, I'll use L1, which is on the far right side. For the PlayStation 4 controller, the default macro buttons are L1 and L2, and these are assigned to three punches at the same time and three kicks at the same time. Using the two default macro buttons allows you to easily taunt your opponent, because to do a taunt, it's all three punches and all three kicks at the same time. As of right now, taunts have no use in Street Fighter V, other than to annoy your opponent of course. Some attacks in Street Fighter V will force your opponent to stand if it hits, but these are rare. For Ryu, for example, it is his crouching hard punch and his back hard kick. These kind of attacks are very important to know if you have combos that are exclusive to characters that are standing. So let's summarize what we've learned today. There are a total of 6 basic attack buttons in Street Fighter V. Light Punch, Medium Punch, Hard Punch, and Light Kick, Medium Kick, and Hard Kick. They can be done while standing, crouching, or jumping. Lights are usually fast but short range and weak. Mediums are usually somewhere in the middle. Hards are usually strong and long range but slow. There are no close proximity normal attacks in Street Fighter V. Every normal attack has its own use, don't forget this guys. Taking any damage lowers your health bar. Once it's empty, you'll lose the round of course. Some characters have above or below average health. This concludes episode 2, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks everyone for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to support and to be notified of my next video release. Below you can check out other video playlists, and if you'd like to support me further, consider checking out my Patreon account. See you next time guys! A huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters, helping me and this project come true.